Is the Game of Thrones finale better than you remember? In honor of the season two premiere of House of the Dragon, I went back and rewatched the series finale of the show that that show spun off from, Game of Thrones. Heard of it? Of course you have. And not just because it was one of the biggest shows of all time when it was on the air, but because people still won't shut up about how much they hate the finale. It's a punching bag even for people that never watched the show. And if that many people hate something, they couldn't possibly be wrong about it, could they? Except they are, and I'm here to argue why the Game of Thrones finale doesn't deserve its bad reputation. I remember I saw the finale at a special fan screening and when the credits rolled, I clapped and I was the only one. Afterwards, I asked some of the people there what they thought. I'll never forget it. People started bringing up their favorite Reddit fan theories as examples of how they wish the show would have ended. And that seemed to be the general shape of the discourse online too. Game of Thrones failure was a failure to meet millions of fans' individualized headcanons. It was a failure of expectation. Whenever I see discourse about the finale, it's never about how the directing is bad. In fact, it's got some of the most striking shots of the entire series. It's never about the acting. After all, these are the same performers we would loved for years giving it their all. You'll hear a lot of complaints about the writing, but that tends to be a catch-all complaint for any piece of media from people who wouldn't even know the first step in writing good fan fiction. Now, this is not to say that there are no legitimate criticisms of the finale, and I'm not defending everything about the final season as a whole. Yes, the Battle of Winterfell was too dark. Like, literally, I couldn't see what was happening. Yes, the show rushed through plot points to get to their final end game. Although that last one, I would argue, is more a fault of the source material than the show itself. So basic story structure, you've got rising action and falling action, and it seems like George R. R. Martin can't help but keep expanding the story he's created. Realistically, Danny should have been on her way back to Westeros by around the halfway point of the series, instead it just kept growing and growing. There's a reason he's never gonna finish those books. That's right, I said it, George R. R. Martin will never finish the Game of Thrones books. If you're out here waiting for him to give you the correct version of the ending that's perfect and wonderful and doesn't have any of the things you hated about the show finale, don't hold your breath. I which at this point you should know. If you've been holding your breath since the end of the show, RIP, I guess. All the problems the showrunners had to overcome with narrative bloat and too much wheel spinning in previous installments, George R. R. Martin has to overcome all those same things. Besides, he told the showrunners how he would end the series. It's the same ending. If I were him, I wouldn't bother finishing the books either. Anyway, I argued then, and I'd argue now, that the finale itself did a good job wrapping up these characters' journey. John is back at the wall, a bittersweet punishment for doing a very Ned Stark thing and being the only noble man in Westeros. Sansa's queen of the north. Arya is free to explore the world. Tyrion is once again the hand of the king, a thankless position he struggled in but is nonetheless well suited for. And finally, Danny is dead and Bran is the king. It's those last two points that seem the most contentious. People were so mad that boring ass robot three-eyed raven Bran became king. Everyone speculated about who would end up on the throne and Bran was nobody's first choice. But Bran is the perfect choice to be king because in a way the show really announced the type of story would be the moment Bran was pushed out that window in the first episode. We kind of begin and end with Bran. Besides the structural reasons Bran works, who ended up on the throne didn't matter. It never mattered. The show made that clear from the jump when characters would say things like, What's the line? The king shits and the hand wipes. That was the point of the show. They even melted down the throne in the final episode. All this carnage and bloodshed for what is ultimately an empty vessel that these maniacs could pour their egos into. The message of the show was always clear. Anyone who wanted to rule had no right ruling. Which brings us to Danny. Danny's turn to the dark side in the final episodes really drove a lot of the audience nuts. I mean, people had even named their kids Daenerys in the real world at this point. There was a lot of emotional investment in Daenerys girl bossing her way to the throne. But here's the thing. The show had seeded Danny's dark side from the start. The final episode even gives a laundry list of some of her darker deeds in the name of breaking the wheel, murdering the slavers of Astapor, crucifying the Miranese nobles, just to name a few. Everywhere she goes, evil men die and we cheer her for it. And she grows more powerful and more sure that she is good and right. The whole previous season was filled with characters looking at Danny's increasingly drastic actions and going, Are we the baddies? And honestly, I don't think there's anything more meaningful the show could have done than illustrate how people, specifically people in power, can justify horrifying things as being for the greater good. How do you know it'll be good? Because I know what is good. You one crazy ass bitch! Watching the show again, I couldn't help but feel how timely it was to see someone take their own personal hurt and suffering, turn it around, and channel it into destroying countless other lives. And unfortunately, I kind of think it'll always be timely. Ultimately, I kind of don't think Game of Thrones was ever meant to be as successful as it was. It was a show built around subverting expectations and challenging its audience. That's not really a winning four quadrant blockbuster formula. I think general audiences like to feel like they're being surprised, but if you throw them a genuine 
genuine curveball or worse, tell them they've been rooting for the bad guy the whole time, they'll turn on you real quick. For example, Avengers Endgame came out the same year as the final season of Game of Thrones to almost universal acclaim. And this isn't me dunking on Endgame. I like Endgame a lot actually, but that movie is filled with big shocking moments that anyone with a passing familiarity with the franchise could have guessed before even seeing one frame of that movie. Even Infinity War's shocking climax is completely deflated knowing it's just part one of two. Neither movie tries to subvert its basic premise in a meaningful way. And that's fine. That's not really what those movies are for. But I think for a franchise known for its shocking twists, for most Game of Thrones fans, that meant big character deaths. And in the end, the show opted for a different kind of twist. There's been plenty of genre media over the years that builds their antagonists around the idea that the bad guy is the hero of their own story. Game of Thrones actually took their audience on a journey with its ultimate villain, made you root for them, and in a way made you complicit in their actions. And the audience rejected that. This is a problem other mega popular franchises have suffered. I'm thinking specifically of the Star Wars prequels, which I discussed in my previous video. While there are a lot of genuine issues with those movies, like a lot, they're not that good. I think what really plagued them most and continues to plague Star Wars, even the good ones, is the astronomical burden of fan expectation. And I wonder how accountable we should hold franchises to those expectations, considering how fickle and ephemeral they can be. Perhaps a better example is the backlash to the Lost finale. I didn't watch Lost, save for a handful of episodes in the finale itself, which I liked for what it's worth, but I definitely saw all the discourse around it and fans calling foul. And I do think if there's a lesson to future showrunners out there, it's maybe Maybe don't build your whole show around a central mystery. For Game of Thrones, it was the White Walkers and who would end up on the throne, among other things. For Lost, it was the island. And while those mysteries might build a passionate fan base, seven or eight seasons in, that fan base will have some very strong opinions on how you should resolve those plot lines and will probably not be happy no matter what you do. So that's my argument for why you should like the Game of Thrones finale, actually. Tell me in the comments down below why you think I'm wrong. Or right, you can be nice. Also, while you're down there, let me know what you're thinking of House of the Dragon season two so far. I like the premiere episode. Please like, subscribe, Subscribe, share all that jazz. I'm dedicated to doing one of these videos every other week and I've got more exciting things on the horizon. Be sure to check out my podcast network, Only Stupid Answers, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.